Okay, so here I've done my DE2 project on SD card. I'm having a WAV file on an SD card and playing it out over the audio codec present on the board. So in my files, in my system, I have a CPU and it's the S version because the economy version is too slow and the S version is just right. I have my clock signals to provide clocks to everything. As you can see here, I have my SDRAM clock, which will provide the 3 nanosecond phase shift for the SDRAM chip and my audio signal for my audio codec. Now, reading the audio codec data sheet, you'll find that for 48 kilohertz, the frequency that I'm clocking the audio at, you have to use a clocking frequency of 12.288 megahertz to the audio codec, as I've selected here. I also have some on-chip memory for my exception and reset vectors, some SDRAM for my standard code and data, and down here I have my Altera SD card interface. Now this interface actually needs no setup at all, you just have to click and insert it and it'll be running fine. I have an audio and video config, as you can see I selected DE2 board and selected for audio initial auto initialize. I also have an audio out and a left justified 16 bit 48 kilohertz format. The reason it's less justified is that's what this codec requires and 16 bit length is a common bit length for video, for audio files. And all that core really does is configure the codec to be ready for playing. This is where all the audio data actually comes in, the audio core. I've configured it for audio out, so I can't read from it, I can only write. And the data width is the same as the audio config core, which is 16 byte bits. Now this will all compile. On the clock section, there's this little nuance of where you need two clock input clocks, one at 27 megahertz for the audio clock, and one at 50 megahertz for your system clock and SDRAM clock. And then this will all generate and compile just fine. And then down here in Cordis, we have the compiled system. And the interesting things to take a look at are this audio clock is exported to the audio codec. This SDRAM clock is exported to the SDRAM clock or the SDRAM card. These four lines right here are the SPI interface to the SD card. You'll find the pin configuration in any documentation about it. We have the audio data lines. We have some I squared C lines and really all these are doing is configuring the audio core at the very beginning. They just attach them and the audio config core will do its job there. And then I also have some lines for my SDRAM. Over here on the input side I have my reset pin. I've attached it to a switch so that way I can leave it on and never have to worry about it. My 50 megahertz clock and my 27 megahertz clock. And then here in the code section, I've done sections. So I have a main section, which is a text section. And I initialize basically my stack pointer, my interrupts. And then down here at the bottom of this initialized section is the initialization of the audio BFO interrupts. I also have included a buffer pointer for the SD card interface buffer, a sector pointer telling you which sector you're currently pointing at, and what cluster or sector your song ends in. So here I've given the first section, first sector of the song to be at this location, um, hex 2010400 and the end song cluster. These are all hard-coded because I do not have a FAT32 code written up. Over here in my macros file I have some macros like push and pop. Clear just to make everything really easy. And then let's see I have a load macro just in case I ever need it. And then I have some common things, some common variable setup like SD slot and audio. 
as well as where my buffer pointer, sector pointer, and song cluster point to. And then when an accept when an interrupt comes, the audio core, remember it has 96 bots available for data. It'll generate an interrupt. And this interrupt will come and it'll trigger off the audio ISR. So when we get to the audio ISR, I load in my buffer, pointer, sector pointer, song cluster. And I also end the endpoint of the buffer and how many loops I'm gonna do right here. So how many loops I'm gonna how many 16-bit words I'm gonna load into the audio core. I also check to make sure that my buffer pointer isn't overflowing the buffer. So in other words, the buffer pointer is within the buffer limits. If it's not, I'll load the next sector of the SD card. And if this next sector of the SD card is past where the song limits are, it'll just idle right here. Otherwise, I will load it. I will put whatever values at the sector pointer into the command argument register, initiate a read, wait here while I'm reading from the SD card, which can take a few nanoseconds or milliseconds. And then after I'm done reading, I'll increment my sector pointer to point to the next sector that needs to be read. And I'll reset the buffer pointer at the beginning of the buffer. And after that point, I'll actually exit the interrupt altogether. And this is all just for timing to make sure I have no distortion in my output signal. Um, one thing to note that I probably forgot to mention was that your sector pointer, initial, your buffer pointer initially, is set to the end of the buffer, so that way your first time through you'll initiate a buffer read, or a sector read from the SD card. So after you get through the sector and loading it in, you'll generate you'll load in the first, you'll load in whatever your buffer pointer is pointing at into a register, store that in both the left and the right audio channels because it's a mono signal and I want both to be playing. And then I'll increment the buffer pointer by two, which is demonstrating 16 bits. I'll detract one from my counter, showing how many words to insert into the audio core. And if my if my Buffer pointer has overflowed the buffer. I'll read a new sector. Otherwise, I'll just keep looping. If my counter is all the way decremented to zero, I'll exit the interrupt altogether. Now, the reason I chose 86 instead of 96, the maximum that the FIFO can handle, is because at 96 you have errors in reading the SD card, where sometimes your SD card will have to read when you're buffer is empty, your FIFO is empty for the audio, but at 86 you're always reading the from the you're always reading a new sector from the SD card when the audio FIFO is almost full and so you never lose any data time running there.